What is the politically correct way to say this? Um, I don't even know. What she now that say. you are are able to provide for yourself, mm -hmm. probably in more ways than you could have earlier in life. Uh huh. Um, how has that influenced, you know, your style? I know you say you're not into fashion, babe. <laughs> <laughs> like, have you seen your Instagram? My next guest is an Emmy award-winning writer, producer, and actor, as well as founder of Hillman Grad, a media company created to empower and provide industry access to underrepresented artists and amplify the stories of diverse, historically marginalized communities across all industries. You know my girl from Master of None, the mind behind the shy. She brought you queen and slim because she brings it to you every ball, know that. Okay, she's your inspo, she's your inspo's inspo. She's on your vision board. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, girls who look like boys, boys who look like girls, non-binaries, and everyone else with a very, very unique haircut. It's Lena Waithe. Which way should I look here? On the Jay Fox show. Listen, you see the cards. Look, I'm into it. This is a, a long time coming, as you just said. <laughs> like, I, I, when I think back to when I was like, hey, can I come to your house? I was, I don't know what kind of shit I was on. I was very bold in that moment, but you said come through. Yeah. Yeah. When was that? What year was that? That was 2021. Yeah. This is after the 20s thing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But that was, you know, I thought you'd be great to do that, you know? Thank and you. And I think that that was me, because I'll be honest, like, I had to tap in with you in a way, because I think you was, you were, I don't know, I think you thought, like, you couldn't tap in for some reason. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, well then the owner should be on me. Cause I tapped you and I was like, yeah, we zoomed, remember? Mm -hmm. That was before the twenties thing, am I correct? We had the zoom? Yes, yeah. So I was like, let's just chat. Like, what are you trying to do? I'm like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And I could tell you were kind of like, what's happening? Yeah, like I just, I knew, I was like, okay, something's happening. It's like I knew that something was happening. I was like, I knew that there was a connection being made. I knew that there was like an intention behind us meeting. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm such a fucking fangirl that like, I, I don't know. Like I just, I wasn't, my sights weren't on business. My sights weren't necessarily like focused on work. I was just curious. Yeah, same, yeah. same. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think for me, it was like, we should talk to each other and get to know each other. And I think, and in, in, in that, it made it so like when the 20s think I was like, yo, Jay would be great. I'll have them have a conversation. And I wasn't even there for it, but I knew it was like the right thing. And Marquise was there mm -hmm. and was like, yeah, that was great. It was cool. Um, because he and I are always Marquise Pfeiffer, who runs my social media. Always in a sharp it. ass blazer. Always. It was always. With a glove and something, a sunglasses. Yes. But, you know, we're always trying to tap in to mm -hmm. like, who can we tap, you know, who's sort of on the same wave. And I think it just sort of made sense. But I realized I was like, oh, I got to hit her because she might be like, I don't know. But yeah. I'm glad we connected, glad the 20s thing worked out. Yeah. And then after that, it was just sort of like, you know, connecting when we could. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, just you tap, like bringing it first, first, uh, first draft, that launch thing, like just it was like, yo, come be in what we're trying to do because mm -hmm. I feel like we're on the same wave and, yeah. and that's really what's been so exciting and also to realize like we hadn't done this in front of a camera we've obviously talked mm -hmm. away from the cameras but I think that's the best thing is to do it organically first and then by the time we we actually sit in front of people they're like oh so y'all just connected and mm -hmm. any misconceptions we had about what and I think that's really what it is, not telling somebody, hey, this and that, but more showing and showing up yeah. in the way that we are now. Yeah. yeah. And your public cosign means a lot. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm just being real. Like, you know, part of the reason why this show exists is because, you know, it's hard to to tap in when you're coming from the internet or when you're trying to like do your own thing, you're in your mm -hmm. own lane, you're trying to get to the next level, you're trying to like meet that person that can bring you into that next level. It's mm -hmm. like, um, 
you don't always have the confidence to to make that introduction. Right. And sometimes even when you do, even some people know who you are, but they don't give you that public, hey, I see you. Right. They don't give you that public, I know you. I know what you mean. You know? Yeah. And so it can feel like, I'm here. <laughs> I got I got a network, but you know, y'all just don't know it, but you know, so I'm glad that we're here. I glad no, we're here. No, me too. We did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Feature Studios is not only the official sponsor of the Jade Fox show, but it is women founded and operated, which means it always smells good. There's always toilet paper and there's always soap in the bathrooms. You know how we do. Here you'll find creative spaces where you can shoot your content, connect with like-minded folks, and as the name suggests, be true. Need somewhere to host your next event? Have a crochet panty party and no place to have it? Well, come on down to Be True Studios. Listen, maybe you need somewhere to shoot your next music video. Maybe you need somewhere to shoot that podcast episode. BTS is just one click away. So click the link in the description to learn more about Be True Studios and for booking. And remember the Be True motto, feel inspired, get creative, and be true. On with the show. I, uh, I, we can cut this out, but <laughs> just, I'm gonna just tell the story really quickly, really We're quickly. We're not cutting nothing out. Okay, shut. All right, so what? when I went over to her house, came in, had gold rings on, I said period. Uh, there was a chef making a seafood dinner or see, like a seafood pasta lunch. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like very wide eyed, <laughs> like like a baby deer or something. I couldn't tell none of this. You played it cool then. Are you serious? I feel like you were chill. You Damn. were not like giving like, oh, snap. It was very natural. OK, <laughs> I'm, like, just, that's I'm just what I enthusiastic, giving? I guess. But like we're sitting here. And we're smoking. Of course. I didn't know oh, well, you were a smoker like that. Yeah. I thought it was giving like LA smoker where it's like, you know, smoke at the function, socially. Yeah, no. I tried to keep up. <laughs> I usually ask, I usually say, are you a smoker or are you not? Cause you know, Mal came through the other day and I was like, do you smoke? Mm -hmm. And she was like, I want to smoke with you. Yeah. But I was like, okay, you take two puffs, I'll take the rest. Mm -hmm. I can prescribe. Yes. But you came in there like, You didn't give me the consult. I just assumed we were on the same <laughs> levels. Listen, I thought I smoked. <laughs> I thought I smoked and then I met a chimney. <laughs> so it was really given what it was given, but I didn't want to. I'm gagged. You know, I just wanted to, I wanted to show my appreciation. Yeah. I didn't want to waste anything, <laughs> the dinner or the weed. It was a good hang. Yeah. So what's it like seeing yourself on screen? Uh, it's strange. It's strange. Okay. Because you're seeing yourself through someone else's lens. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to look in the mirror and okay, that's what I look like. But when you're on a set and you're reciting lines and you're trying to, you know, you are like, who is that? You know, but I'm very blessed because I was in a, and I'm specifically talking about master of none here. I was very blessed to be in an environment where I was encouraged to be myself mm -hmm. on screen. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing, you know, more, it's pretty vulnerable to, to just be yourself on screen. Yeah. You know, you do that every day. Um, and I think that by season three of Master of None, which a lot of particularly queer women come up to me, queer black women, mm -hmm. queer women, sometimes they're not even queer. Like they come up to me and talk to me about that season because it is a very vulnerable, emotional season of television. Mm -hmm. um, but I had really grown into myself in a way that I really let go in that season and was really honored to hear from some actors I really respect um, through some voice notes, mm -hmm. hit me about it and just saying how much they enjoyed it. They enjoyed the, it's so interesting to call it a performance because it really more so felt like me trying to really experience something through mm -hmm. memory on screen. Oh, okay. And so that's really where I do it. You know, it's interesting because, you know, we talk about social media and you're able to be vulnerable just about your life and what's going on. You're just saying, hey, this is what's actually going on. For me, it's, whether it be 20s, even though I'm not performing in that, or Master of None, where I am, these are 
things I'm experiencing and going through and trying to figure out, but I'm doing it, trying to write it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just saying it and that it'd be much if I could just like, okay, so here's the thing that happened. But instead, I kind of have to do it through character mm -hmm. that have to get you to care about the characters to care about what they're going through. And I don't want everything is not like, okay, exactly, exactly. So I'm taking experiences and trying to make some sense of them. Mm -hmm. So that way we can put it on screen. So when someone watches it, they can go, hmm, I've experienced something similar to this before. Yeah. So it's a very crazy, tricky thing to, to, to be performing something that I've written that's very vulnerable. But you've lived a little bit too. Uh, I mean, look, the coming out episode or the episode, the episodes in which I'm going through the seasons of love. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's just my, it's what I'm here to do, mm -hmm. you know? So I look at it not as a job, but as a, you know, a purpose. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you're writing and you're, you're using influences from your real life, people mm -hmm. that you know in your real life, how do you, I feel like that's a very delicate dance mm -hmm. because you don't piss nobody off. Or rather, let me say, um, we don't want problems, but we want to be honest. Right. You know, we want to be honest. We want to tell the story in the way that makes sense. Um, and so my question is, when you are using like life experiences, people that you know, things like that, like how do you find that balance of being truthful, but also protecting yourself and others? Yeah, it's tricky because sometimes things happen in life where it feels like a movie. Yeah. And you're just like, I got to put this in something. Yeah. But the truth is, the I think the job of the writer is to take pieces. So nothing is ever exact. Or otherwise, you're doing a documentary. So it all, everything, I, I, I don't, speaking of documentaries, there's a great documentary about Nora Ephron that her son did about her after she passed away called Everything is Copy. Um, and it's an amazing doc, and I recommend it highly to anyone that, whether you're a writer or not, it's just a really interesting documentary because Nora Ephron has given us some of the most amazing movie moments, you know, mm -hmm. that, we, that we've seen. But the truth is she's used, you know, things from her relationship with her sisters to obviously her ex-husband to what it is to be a mother, to her love for food and travel. Everything is copy. Mm -hmm. and, her, and that's her idea. You know, it doesn't have to fit with everyone. But the truth is... We all we have to pull from is our experiences mm -hmm. as artists, you know, and so you want to be thoughtful. Um, and, you know, I love Jada's book. She don't say no names, you know, sometimes she'll skip names. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's different. She's telling, you know, part of her life. But for me, it's about, OK, if I'm going through this, I'm sure somebody else has as yeah. well. Um, and here's the deal. They may not have gone through it in the way in which I did. But, and, and that's where you add color and you do interesting things because you're like, okay, this is, this is not my life. This is a TV show. Or this is a movie. So I want to respect that and I want to, I got to get creative. Mm -hmm. But, you, you know, I was telling somebody the other day, a writer is nothing more than a walking wound. My God, that's a bar. That's who we are. And so who are we? And it's interesting because people want the work to make them feel comforted. You know what? You that you post a lot about that idea mm -hmm. when it comes to the creative process of just like you have to be vulnerable. Yeah. It's like you have to um, maybe not, even if it's not giving a piece of yourself to an audience, but like being able to access that access that that nucleus of like that experience or whatever, you know, trauma, whatever it is. Um, I lost my train of thought. No, I mean, the truth is, I want to, I don't want to interrupt you, but the truth is, is like, artists don't have to be vulnerable. It is a choice. Say more. Sometimes an artist is, wants to make art that is there to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to feel confronted. Mm. And I got you. <clears throat> and so then there are other artists whose work you experience and you're like, well, this is going to feel like a punch in the chest. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy to have been 
to have that experience. Because like, here's a, for example, one of my favorite movies is, is Eve's Bayou. It is not an easy watch. Mm -hmm. um, it's dealing with a lot of complexities in terms of family, memory, um, and uh, loyalties, who we're loyal to. Mm -hmm. um, and also our own power. And I watched as a young, you know, young girl, like I'm about the age of um, Eve in, you know, in the movie. And I think that's why it was such a powerful experience for me. Uh, but that Casey Lim is one to, to really confront us mm -hmm. about some things. And she didn't have to do that. Yeah. She could have made a very different film. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. And, th and there's no right or wrong way to be an artist. Mm -hmm. It's really about what kind of artist, you know, you, you choose to be. Yeah. And so and I think that for me, I don't know how to make work that is not somewhat confronting. Uh, but if you come to my work wanting to just be comforted, mm -hmm. you might be in for a rude awakening. So what, so someone who's never seen anything that, you know, you penned, mm -hmm. <clears throat> like, do you have a goal for the person watching your work? Like, is it to, like, I'm here to challenge you. I'm here to have you confront some things. Or is it more for you? It's like, this is just my expression and this is my intention. And your perception of it is out of my hands. You know, it's tricky because when you're doing, when you're in the process of writing something, it's such a heavy thing every day, sitting in front of the computer, mm -hmm. figuring it out. You don't have that much space to think about the audience that much. Because mm -hmm. if you're doing that, you're stopping the creativity, you're stopping the flow. Yeah. And sometimes you write something that's really crazy where you're like, I don't know if they make it in the end. That was a little foreshadowing. I mean, it's, how can you foreshadow something that came out? A couple you know, years? Yeah. <laughs> but okay. it's like Thelma and Louise, you know, mm -hmm. it was a big influence for me. So it set it off. Yeah. Uh, a lot of those characters don't survive mm -hmm. the credits. And so, but also that's what I grew up on. You know, it's like writers that were not afraid to do things. Mm -hmm on a screen that would be, you know, in service of the work. Not necessarily like, was the audience ready for that? Mm -hmm. Can they handle that? What are they gonna think about that? I do think that it, it because I, as you're talking, I'm thinking about um, a series that you, I believe you produced it. Them Coming In? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, on Amazon, I believe. Yeah. And I loved it. But I, I also- your review. Yeah. Yeah. You were kind of like thrown because you were like, I feel like I'm not supposed to like it, but yeah. I do. Yeah. Because I would basically, I would talk to people and I'd be like, when this happened and that happened. But I'm also someone who's like, I'm interested in like the the dark stuff. Sure. It's more interesting to me. Yeah. Same. Um, there's more questions and to be had. Mm -hmm. And so when I would talk to like other black people, they'd be like, what? What? And I'm like, bro, it's art. It's like, there's, as you mentioned, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, but, but what's so interesting is that that is a forever thing. The yeah. fact that people were walking out of color purple because two women kissed is like, it's it's humorous to us, mm -hmm. but it's also historical. Like if we got Dr. Henry Louis Gates in here, he would say, oh, this has been happening since the since the movies were being made. Mm -hmm. There were always, you know, conversations about how people are represented you know, how certain groups of people are being represented, you know, is that exploitation? Do we need to see it? Um, different eras of cinema we've gone through. Um, I was just talking to someone the other night, someone talking about the black exploitation films that obviously a lot of us love, were produced and written by uh, white people. Mm -hmm. um, some not, but most of them were. And so, yeah, but that was a product of its time. You know, that was sort of what that was like, good times and all that, Norman Lear. Mm -hmm. You know, but we're grateful for good times. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, you know, The Color Purple, the original film directed by Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. So it's so sometimes we kind of, you can, you can have selective memory about certain projects or certain things. Uh, but 
that to me, especially now, everybody's got an opinion. Yeah. And so, and everybody can voice their opinion. And I think sometimes because, and everybody has a right to their opinion, it shouldn't, it, it doesn't necessarily have to affect the way the artist makes art, but it is affecting it. And we're seeing it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're seeing artists saying, well, I don't want to get dragged for this. I don't want them to come for me for that. I don't want to get canceled. And so when you have artists afraid of being canceled, it is going to affect the material. Mm. So how do you protect? Like, how do you how do you keep that that idea in mind when you're creating and not being uh, susceptible to changing your vision? Um. It's interesting. I think what I kind of want to do is really change venue. Like, I, I want to get into theater. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. And sort of get folks up out of their living rooms. I've been in people's living rooms. I'll continue to be in people's living rooms. I like people being in a living room, watching people in a living room. That's really what the shy has become. Mm -hmm. You're watching characters in living rooms while you sit in your living room. And you both are, like, experiencing something. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I've been had that fight before. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, my mom got on my nerves like that one time. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how it is with my, you know, ex's baby dad. It's about like, I'm sort of, and, but what we're doing is sort of saying, okay, if this argument were to arise, here's how we want to, here's, here's a way in which it can be resolved. So people at home go, huh, I never thought about not yelling at him, but maybe we sit and listen to him. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we're I'm having taking that. this perspective. We're taking that. But what sometimes is, I said the biggest competition for one of my shows is your phone. Because if you're watching the show and you look into it, but at some point you're gonna go, well, still kind of listening, mm -hmm. still kind of, wait, rewind, take that back. Hold on, what did mm -hmm. they say? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're so used to being stimulated and getting content, then people may scroll through TikTok while watching the show and watching the TikTok review about the show they're watching. Yeah. Like, how am I supposed to feel about this? Mm -hmm. What are people saying? You Got know? you. And so for me, and I've always loved theater, experiencing it like go, going, being inside of it. When you're there, it's cardinal rule. Phone is off. When people come out on the stage to entertain you, they're right there. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. can smell them, you can feel them. It's a different energy. It's a different energy. Yeah. And it's also a one-time thing. Even though that cast is going to come out the next night and do the same performance, it's not going to be the same performance. Mm -hmm. Because the actress that may come on, she may have fallen in love that night, before she came out, and you don't feel that, or she might have gotten ghosted that mm -hmm. night. She's gonna come out, and you may there's gonna be a different energy. True. You know, is the audience rowdy? Are they ready? Is it a Tuesday audience? Are they kind of like sleepy and kind of there? Mm -hmm. It's an experience. And when you walk out of the theater, you're talking to someone and you're engaging with someone, and hopefully, if I'm lucky, somebody will call someone and say, "Yo, man, I saw this play." You got to go, yo, I don't even want to mess it up. You should go check it out. And also, um, not necessarily running toward Broadway. Love Broadway. Very honored. I um, worked on Ain't No Mo. Uh, but regional theater, we pay 20 bucks to get in. Mm -hmm. And so it's accessible to people. Uh, because I think for me, you know, and there are no executives. There's no, none of that. It's like words, actors, let's figure it out. And then we let an audience come in, experience it and uh, maybe have a talk back after yeah. and then walk away. And it's like, huh, it's very different from sitting at home watching TV mm -hmm. and scrolling. So for me, I want to I want to shift venues a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I mean, like the shy is, is fantastic. 20s was, you know, master of none. I'm in people's living rooms, you know, in their iPad, in their lap. Mm -hmm. It's very intimate. And so when people see me out in the world, there is a there's a knowing there's a familiarity. Mm -hmm. And, and, but also they feel me on big screen as well, whether it be Ready Player One and things like that. But even in that, I'm still grounded in myself. Yeah. You know, and, and that's important for people to see me in that environment as well, still sort of like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I said to say, I, I never want to follow the crowd. Um, is you want the crowd to kind of follow you. Yeah. We are the crowd. <laughs> you watching you watching this video, we are the crowd. <laughs> no, we all we all doing our thing. Yeah. So in your Vanity Fair article, okay. which by the way, <laughs> the cover Yo. was crazy. Come on, Annie Leibowitz. Just like know? just I remember like going on Instagram and I feel like 
I had to do a double take because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's us. That's right. That's us. We up in there. Yeah. Um, so that was great. Congratulations it, it, on that. Look, it was a beautiful, beautiful moment. I didn't even know that that was a thing. I wasn't chasing that. But I remember getting ready to walk onto a red carpet for something. I can't remember what the event was. And my publicist said, we got Vanity Fair. And I said, I didn't know we were going after it. And then I just kind of went onto the carpet. And I think, and then I was on the carpet doing interviews and stuff like that. I think it was sort of setting in of like, oh, because it was this trifecta, it was the shy, master of none, and ready player one. Mm-hmm. It was sort of those three very different things. And Radika Jones was becoming the new editor in chief. It was the first cover that she had taken over editor in chief of, of the magazine. So every year she always hits me and says, five year anniversary, you know, because we're connected. Um, and, and she whispered this to me. I don't think she would mind me telling people, but I think when she was sort of like interviewing for the job, mm-hmm. they asked her, who would you put on the cover? And, and she said, lean away. And, and, and I, and I didn't know her then. I, we didn't, but it was just, it really was very powerful. This idea of like where I was standing and, and what was happening. Um, and then also it got me Jackie Woodson, who interviewed me, who I met because of the interview and we are family. Yeah. Now. So that was dope. It was just an amazing thing. And, and I know it meant a lot and it meant a lot to me. And it's just, it's just a moment like, and I remember Annie Lieber was saying, I'm excited to take your picture at this moment right now in your life because you'll never be here again. And you can see it. Like oh, when yeah. you look at that cover, you can see in your smirk, like you can just be like, I'm about to <laughs> fuck y'all up. Like it's giving very much like y'all don't even know, bro. And I also like that you were wearing just like a simple white tee. Yeah, that was very... And you had your, your locks pulled back. And very little, you know, yeah. no makeup. You know, it was, it was sort of this like, we're here mm-hmm. and we ain't going nowhere. Yeah. And you know, and that's the thing. It was like a minute of, you know, and I guess, I guess the Emmy had happened by that time, I think. Yeah. So it was just a pedestal and just waiting for me to stumble and fall off of it. But it's fun when you're up there. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, we're going to be human again. That's the cycle, you know? Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, okay, we'll put you up here. You mean all this and you are all these things. And it's just this weird thing that society does where they can make you believe a person is superhuman. Mm-hmm. And it just does not exist. Because it seems like weird. It's like, how are we the same? And I think that's always my mission is to remind people like, we are the same. Yeah. Well, in the Vanity Fair article, Mm -hmm. you said that you were, quote, tired of white folks telling my stories. So I'm interested to know, how did this idea of owning black narratives show up when you joined the L Word Generation Q? When I joined, I did a bit of a cameo on there. Yeah. Full circle moment. Look, it was, that was such an interesting thing to figure out because I had a show on Showtime. Obviously, that was a Showtime thing. It was very, there was a lot of whispers and talk in the Showtime offices of, well, is Lena gonna do it? Is Lena gonna... And I just said, I'd love to do it, mm-hmm. but if I'm gonna do it, I would like to have something to say. So by allowing you to come into our space, I assumed you'd be respectful of my house. Uh, okay, I, um, I think you lost me. You tried to fuck my wife. That was my reaction, too. I'm sorry. Hold on. Chloe, I had no idea she was your wife. Truly, she said nothing. She don't really have to say anything to you. (laughs) She can fuck whoever she wants. I told you to behave yourself, but now the bridge has been burned. All right? I can't have you coming in here trying to colonize our game night. You got to get the fuck out of here and never come back. Okay. I just like the money that I just passed off for the night. 10K is gone. And we're just going to call it reparations. That's fair. Go. My apologies. I had no idea. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Huh? Yeah, I, I received that. Go. All right, I'm going. Go. Sorry, Eddie. God bless. The L word was very important to me mm-hmm. as I was watching it, sneaking to watch it and all that stuff that you do. And for me to be on it and like to be in the scene with Shane, it was like, OK. But I really wanted to speak to the fact that, and I was talking, I was having these conversations in between setups too. So the cast would be like, okay, Lena wouldn't just, you know. Mm -hmm. Our queer community is very segregated. Yeah. And I felt like it wasn't really being acknowledged, you know. And look, I, 
I'm a, I'm a participant in that segregation. I, you know, I'm like, you know, Listen. when we hang out, it's like, yeah. it's the queer black girl. We know who's watching this. I mean, I mean okay. I mean, <laughs> but it's also no shade. I mean, it's like, cool, yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you see the white. But it also always sort of felt like the Dinah Shore stuff, some of these like lesbian weekends, they felt really white mm -hmm. in terms of the music, in terms of what they were charging, in terms of what they were trying to say. Yeah. And it just, to me, I was always felt like, hmm, where are we at? Mm -hmm. And where's our weekend? Mm -hmm. And what's our thing? Yeah. Um, and it just felt very like we were excluded mm -hmm. from it. Super big shout out to the one who played Tasha on the show. Came in, you know, amazing. No one rocks a slick back middle part Yo, like you, sis. That's a tone ready. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Giving it to us. I was mad. I was mad about that. Like we we need more Tasha. It's, uh, and then I think that some people were like not happy. I, mean, I, I was seeing in the comments, people were just sort of like, where's the, you know, black mask representation on the show? Like, you know, mm -hmm. and so I think people were hoping my character would be around for a while. But if that was the case, I would have wanted to be in the room and like have an actual storyline yeah. that would actually make sense. Because it's like, why am I hanging with them? Mm -hmm. Like, what's the, what's the connection? I like that you kind of sunned Shane. Cause Shane needed to be not the character, <laughs> the character. Yeah, no, okay? that's just cool. Listen, like it was just, cause even watching the L word, it was very much like, I'm gay. So I'm like, uh, like, kind of like I'm watching it and I'm getting tingles or whatever. Sure. But you know, Sarah it was Shahi? very, huh? No. <laughs> it was just like, it was very like outside, like looking in, like, I know that yeah. this, this isn't my life. And so, right. and I always saw Shane as like regarded as this, you know, the Rico Suave, mm -hmm. like the one that you want. Correct. You know? And the one we're supposed to model ourselves after, the masked right. lesbians and whatnot. But that's not my story. And that's not what happens in my community. And so seeing you was just, was refreshing, confident, listen. Just like, I don't know, your character was very you. You know, Thank as you. the as your advisors before telling you be you on screen, like yeah. it was really refreshing to see you be you on that screen. That was that was a cool moment. Thank you so much. I'm grateful for it. And you know, in another universe, maybe my character have an arc on there. But we it was a lot of conversations mm. about what my character would be saying, mm. what would be happening. Cause there was gonna be this thing about like me and Shane kinda like kinda beefing over a, a woman and I kinda thought I was like, okay, that feels a little you know, like expected. Mm. And so I just kind of wanted to kind of have something that was a little bit more layered, a little to play. Yeah. That's all. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I want to get into fashion. Okay. Because you see the drip. I'm tame today, but listen, let them let him see it. She let challenged see me. It. She was like, don't come in here. Yeah, gonna I was rock, like, you gonna embarrass we me. Gonna, we, gonna, gonna, we gonna rock queer black women. Yes. The muses. Independent designers. Shout out to the muses. P M. You Shout out to for. yeah, we're gay. Shout out to we're gay. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, um, we out here. Yeah, that's the thing. Like to me, I really enjoy. I don't think of myself as being super into fashion, which I think people would be thrown by because I like a fit pick. Yeah, but Doesn't I also like to tag. You know brands that you may not be aware of, mm -hmm. or folks are you know starting up. That to me is really fun and exciting. And people do send me stuff. You know, people say, hey, you tried this? I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. That's almost more fun. I like a, 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 um, a designer moment here and there. My stylist, Jason Bolden, who's amazing, who gets me into those things. But I do love a black and brown designer if they're queer, it's even, even better. But even better. Even better. Because you just feel like, oh, I'm wearing community. Yeah. You know? And I'm a billboard for community. Mm -hmm. So if somebody sees, like, that's a fly jacket. Oh, yeah, you should follow her. This is her handle. Check her out. She's dope. And it's easy to do that on social. You tag them. It's right there. So we're able to connect. I know you did the collab uh, post yeah. with the jacket. And I know how much she appreciates it. So what she hit me, she's like, yo, Lena, can you get this? Because that was we put this jacket on the shy, we put it on the character, mm -hmm. uh, on the shy character Brittany, uh, played by a queer young black woman. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, it's, it was my jacket, but I sent it to Chicago. She put it on for the scene, they sent it back. That to me is really what that's as that I want to be that intentional and just that communal. Cause it ain't no thing. It's like I told my stuff, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna send you my jacket, put it on her, mm -hmm. you know, and then you can get it back to me so that we can get that look for her, um, which was an amazing one. Yeah, and I appreciate you using this, using this real estate, using this time to, you know, you support, support the, the people, ladies. support the people. On the fashion tip, mm -hmm. back on the fashion tip. Let's do it. So now that you 
um, what is the politically correct way to say this? Um, I don't even know. What she now that say. you are are able to provide for yourself, mm -hmm. probably in more ways than you could have earlier in life. Uh huh. Um, how has that influenced, you know, your style? I know you say you're not into fashion, babe. <laughs> <laughs> like, have you seen your Instagram? The last time I, hold up, first of all, the last time I saw you, well, you had on these pants. Oh, they were like culottes, kind of. That's also a young, August 8th, a, a young man, Kevin. Um, yeah. yeah. I, 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 here's the deal. I'm at this point in my life where... I'll find things mm -hmm. in my closet and I'm like, where is these coming from? Because people will send me stuff and I always tell people, like, I will try to get to it, I'll try to rock it. Um, but I found those and I thought, these are really dope. I wore those two days in a row. I wore yeah, them those to are the tough. event that I went to <laughs> where you were at. Um, I was hosting something for the LGBT, LGBT Center out here in LA. And the next day I interviewed Coleman Domingo for Rustin. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I gotta rock these because Coleman gonna come in something crazy. Yeah. So, you know, Coleman been stunting on all of us. But mm. yeah, I think it's 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 also the Chicago in me mm. where we like a fly thing, but it doesn't always have to be about the brand. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what I always, so I was never super into, I mean, look, I was a young kid in the 90s, Tommy Hill figured this, Tommy Hill figured that, you know, uh, Fat Farm and whatnot. But as I got older, I really just kind of wanted to be in stuff that made me feel like me. Yeah. And I felt comfortable in it. And, you know, and with, you know, Jerry Lorenzo, I've known for a super long time with Fear of God and Essentials and things like that. What I really dig too about that is, you know, it's, it's redefining what a CEO dress is like. Yes. You know, it's like yeah. you can wear sweatpants with a blazer and some sneakers and be the coolest person in the room and not get kicked out of a restaurant. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so I think that to me is like, it's always nice, you know, rude, Ruigi as well. Like there's this sort of, it's, it's, it's preppy, but sort of, you know, kind of flipping the, the bird a little bit to mm -hmm. this sort of like super suit and tie. Oh, let me dress like this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always tell, I dress for comfort. I really, really do. I always want to be comfortable. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because that's the, the we're like mask, lesbian, whatever, but men, are not uncomfortable in their shoes. No. You know, yeah. they can stay at the party longer. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, let my feet be comfortable. Let me be able to breathe mm -hmm. so I can move, so I can network, so I can do what I gotta do. Yeah. And it's a, it gives you an advantage almost. You know, the fact that I can sit like this and like vibe out. Yeah. And so that's also a, a privilege too. It, we, you know, it's like, we, it's how we feel comfortable in dressing but it gives us this sense of when we're around people that maybe are in power, which sometimes those people sometimes have penises, mm -hmm. they can feel like, oh, you like one of the boys. Okay, I can yeah. be more comfortable here. Then, you know, so we have to be mindful of that where if someone who is thin presenting and feels more comfortable in a dress, mm -hmm. they're going to sometimes be treated differently by someone who's in a position of power. Right. So fashion is very, you know, interesting. Mm -hmm. It's not a thing of like, oh, I'm gonna wear this to get a hit. No, nah, it's how I feel comfortable. And it's like where I get misgendered half the time because you know people are yeah. like, sir, uh, can we, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's fashion is is more than just clothes, as you know. It's so much about identity yeah. and how people receive you as well. Yeah, and I appreciate like you being representation in that way mm -hmm. because I come from like a sterile government background. I was all up and through Banana Republic. I had a swoop bang, <laughs> like, you know. The bang. I had the bay, the bay and the yang. <laughs> I, had, I had both of them. Oh, bay, yang. Yeah. And part of the reason why I've even moved to LA and tried to do anything is <clears> I just, <throat> even if I don't have a clear objective, I just need to know that I can be myself and be successful at the same time. Yeah. Because I think as black people, we get so used to shape shifting, code switching, um, turning, like turning it on, turning it off and trying to be the version of ourselves that we need to be to fit in a room, to be heard, yeah. to be taken seriously. And so I love that, like you dress how you want to, and you still have the respect that you do, because I know that I would say it wasn't even until like, I would say it wasn't even until maybe two or three years ago 
that I stopped. I stopped. I started wearing what I normally wear around my parents. Oh, wow. Because when I would like go and visit home, I would like, you know. Thim it up. Just a little bit. Just Jeez. a little bit. My family wishes. They're like, Lena been <laughs> looking like the brat since, you know, second grade. Okay. But, but I, that's what I put into the, into the Thanksgiving episode because I was just like, I'll own it. But also I was like sort of a tomboy or whatever you would say. Mm -hmm. So, and they were like, okay, this is what you're doing. But it's true. Like, as I got older, I think they were like, okay, are you still in the tomboy phase? Like, what's happening? But that's also, a thing. I remember being a girl in you know, high school wearing the big t-shirt, the baggy pants. Like, it was just, you didn't even, didn't nobody even call me gay, really. They were just True. like, oh, this, you just, okay, that's what you're doing. <laughs> and so for me, I didn't, even, I, I didn't even think about it in terms of my sexuality. It was genuinely how, I, it was like, I'm gonna go to the boys section. And my yeah. sister was, very, you know, straight black woman going to the girl. So my mom was like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. But whatever, well, I'm not gonna tell her to go wear a tight skirt and whatever, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna let it be. But then when it then, of course, translated into, oh, I'm gay. Okay, well, hold on now. Back up. Let's have a different conversation. What? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's huh? different. <clears throat> that's different. Hold on. I've got a problem with that. But, you know, I think um, I'm really I'm really grateful that I can do that because, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, it's funny because you said being successful and being yourself, if you have to pretend to be something else, in order to be successful, you, you in for something and you in for a stumble. That's facts. That's facts. Um, I have to ask this. Okay. Because I see the posts. I see the like, <laughs> the smizing, sultry, you know, Huji filter. First oh, of all, now Hooji. that I mentioned the Huji filter, hold on. It's Come the on. Huji filter, right? It is. I, I know my filters. Come on. It's the best. What is your screen time when it comes to Instagram? I don't know. I don't look at it. Um, Your story be popping. Yeah, so, so sometimes, and I try to curate that. Marquise will get in there, mm -hmm. obviously, when they look really professional. Um, that's Marquise. Um, but I, it's quick. It's like if I see something I like, I, I really try to think of my stories as like um, magazine editorial. Like if I could put my own magazine together. Yeah. It's sort of like, okay, I would do a piece about this person, article about that person, then you check this out, or this is something new that I'm into, or 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 this is a person who gave me a facial I think is great. You should, if you if you're interested. That's exactly what it feels like. Yeah, it's me sort of curating some mm -hmm. things. Um and then also whatever, like birthday, shouting folks out, people so people know who my community is and all that kind of stuff. Um but yeah, it's not crazy because I'm I really it's a, it's a it's it's a quick pop and okay now I gotta read or I gotta write or I gotta watch something mm -hmm. so because that and I, mind you I observe I see there's some people who yeah they're online they're and that's what they do and so and I respect that and I think for me hey this is what I can add like this is something we're doing rising voices you know hey check that out if you're interested shows coming back or this time or whatever yeah. and then stories is really just about hey, this is what I'm interested in. If you guys are interested too, cool. Mm -hmm. And then every now and then, because Marquise was like, people still have to see your face. Like it can't just be. So yeah, I'll throw in a, a photo if it's like, sometimes sometimes I like an outtake, like sometimes I'll be goofing around and it's usually the one that I wasn't, you know, it's like, okay, that's better than the one I was trying to do. So cool. But I, but I don't, it, a big thing for me, I was goofing around with Mal yesterday and Mal, we did a quick little thing and she was like, should I do it again or should I change the line? I was like, no, that's the first take is cool. Or like mm -hmm. we do like a second take. Like, all right, don't think too much about it. Yeah. You I can. think that's the big thing. And because I don't have the bandwidth to, so I just, I was like, oh, I like that picture. Cool post. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's how I always, I'm very guttural. Yeah. It's like, yeah, poop, poop. Yeah. yeah. You just be putting yeah. so many, you be putting me onto like brands creatives, Amazing. designers. Was this, this was you like, cause I think I was, did you get that put you on the work here? Or did you know about her already? There's a chance I knew about her already. Uh-huh. Um, 
but even the muses, like just oh, even being able okay. to connect dots. Yeah. Cause like, I, I know the muses, I met the muses, I had met you. And then, you know, when I'm seeing, oh, you're wearing something from the muses, it just feels like, oh, we're really in this community thing. Exactly. Like we're really doing this community. Yes, thing. yes. Um, and it feels great and it's lovely. And I think that's what we, we gotta, I was watching Nikki Giovanni documentary, which I also shared in my stories today. Tell people to check that out on Max. I, nothing to do with it and produce it, but I watched mm -hmm. it, loved it. Some friends of mine produced it. It's just, that's, you know, seeing Nikki Giovanni, you know, chilling with a friend who she knew from, they showed footage of them when they were in their younger days. And then now talking about aging and losing friends. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is yeah. what I want us to, to, to get to. We got many moons. We've yeah. been together for a long time and we're going to watch each other evolve and grow. And I think it's easier to, to tear each other down or to point a finger, this and that. It's like, Competition. it's better and more rewarding mm -hmm. when we embrace each other. And the thing is, is like, you know, when we're divided, we fall. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a big believer in you don't have to agree with everything a person says. You don't have to agree with everything they put out. But guess what? You're better together. Yeah. Well, I agree with something that you put out, or rather something that you uh, executive produced, Kokomo City. Oh, yeah. I I don't really know what I was expecting when I watched that. I don't think anybody knows what they're expecting. It's so good. Please, is this, is this on me? <laughs> Please stream Kokomo City. Yeah, um, it'll be our, available on Paramount Plus in February. Oh, Yeah, we posted about that. Look at the exact date and go. But you go, you guys go hit Kokomo City's IG page and it'll be up there. Yes. But it'll be available stream in February, which is next month. And it's gonna, here's the thing. A lot of people are scared to go see that movie and to go seek it out. If it's on their television screen in their living room, mm -hmm. they will watch it in private mm -hmm. and it'll hit more people the way it needs to. Bit of a punch in the chest, maybe. Mm -hmm. But it's also, it's so much more than that. It's so much more. It's, it's funny. It's You're laughing. The opening story. I watched it on a laptop when I was in London. I was yeah. like, gotta get this out. Mm -hmm. Like that opening story, which is talking about the gun. <clears throat> the client had a gun. Listen, I'm not gonna like spoil no, all I'm of it. No, I'm gonna say, because it don't end like, the way you think it will, but. At all. But and you're it's, just in it. Yes, it's honest. It's true. I believe it. I Shout believe out to these D. people. Smith, yes. Um, first directorial debut, mm -hmm. black trans woman, who is, you know, telling her story the way she sees fit. Yes. And and telling the stories of her sisters, um, in a real way. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and 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 you know, God bless the dead. You know, we lost Coco the doll. Yeah. Before, you know it really was able to come out. And that is also a part of our journey in making movies. And um, it's not all glitz, and glamor and red mm -hmm. carpets. And I don't ever want to discourage anyone from, you know, get throwing a hat in the ring, but it is not for the faint of heart yeah. at all. And I've had to watch directors go through so many things. Like I work with first time directors, A.B. Rockwell, D. Smith, um, you know, Rada Blank, mm -hmm. a 40 year old version, Justin Simeon on Dear White People, Melina Mitsukis, Queen of Slim was her first film, obviously mine as well. So we just, it's, it's a weird thing to make your first movie yeah. because you aren't the same after that. Mm. And so a lot of people that want to make their first film, that is on their list of things to do, their life thing. Like, and then when you cross it off, then the question becomes, who am I now? Mm. Now that I've achieved this thing that I've been chasing thing. my whole life, I still got a whole lot of life left. So I gotta do that again. I gotta go through that again. And it feels like you, you've you kept up this momentum. Like it never, it never seems like you like, you're a tourist, so I know you be Correct. chilling in nice places. <laughs> um, I know that you've been next to crystal blue waters. <laughs> Um, but like, it just always seems like you've never gotten to a point where like, okay, cool. We chilling now. <laughs> it's just always I like, you it. always have your hand in, in something. Yeah. Um, and on the producer tip, I'm interested to know 
with 1001. Mm -hmm. First of all, congratulations, Grand Jury Prize winner. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sundance. Um, what was that like to be a part of ushering Tiana Taylor like into this new creative space? <sighs> Tiana Taylor. A joy to watch, truly. She's a firecracker. And she and I were friends before doing 1001. And she, you know, we told the story, she would see me out, we'd be out at the same things. Mm -hmm. And she would always say, Lena, when are we working? <laughs> what are we doing? Anybody know Sienna? No, I ain't lying. What are we York doing accent. something? What's going on? And I'd be like, yo, is, is going to is present itself. Nah, 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 nah. Stop playing with me, man. When are we doing something together? I'm like, I don't know what it is yet. But when it happens, it'll be great. And I know people hate hearing that at parties. It's not what you want to hear. But I genuinely believe that yeah so of course fast forward av this movie and tiana auditions and tiana calls me and she's like yo I audition i feel good about it i said i have nothing to do with the decision who gets cast in that role i'm a producer it's my job to support the director mm -hmm. so what av says goes and she's like okay so i'm like i appreciate the call yeah it's not my call yeah so she heard that and understood it. But I also was like, in my mind, like, if it's meant, it's yours. Mm -hmm. So AB is a person that really takes her time in terms of making decisions. So, and that's the most important decision. Who's gonna play on this? And so AB never wants to make a wrong decision, especially on her first feature. Mm -hmm. Of course, I tell AB, it's impossible. If you make the decision, it cannot be wrong. So whatever you decide is right. Mm -hmm. So she went back and forth. I remember having calls with her. And I had to really put my friendship with Tiana to the side and say, hey, I know I'm cool with her and I love her. I genuinely think she's right for it beyond my friendship with her. You show me someone stronger than her, you, then we'll talk. And A.V. really had to make the decision. I think she knew where I stood, mm -hmm. but she also knew that I wanted her to know that where I stood did not matter. It had to be her choice. And it was. She came to that decision. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful decision. Also yeah. grateful. Uh, and those two are like two lions in a cage. Like they are two New York women who are really mirrors of each other. Mm -hmm. And talking about personal things and putting work, putting your personal stuff on the page. AV put a lot of her stuff on that page that Tiana has to come and now interpret and embody. Yeah. So there's a lot of conversations that are happening there. I can get in there and talk to them separately and, you know, really talk to them together, mm. talk to them separately and really sort of vouch for the other to each, to, to, to them, to each other because I'm like, y'all are both brilliant. And that's why something brilliant is coming out of this. Cause y'all have so many interesting skill sets. And I know what it's like. I work with Melina, you know, on Queen of Slim. Hmm. Melina Matsukas, who is such a, just a genius being, visionary. I, and she and I have a different vibe because I look at Melina and go, you're brilliant. You do what you're gonna do with it visually. I trust you. Hmm. And, and Melina also gonna give me notes that make sense to make the story work. And sometimes Melina would trust me more than she trusts herself. And I say, no, I, I don't know you, whatever you say, go. So we have that kind of sisterly situation, you know? Um, but I think AV, a a and also because Melina had worked on Thanksgiving episodes, so we'd really bonded there. But AV and Tiana really kind of had to figure this out on the movie. Mm -hmm. And me as a producer, it is my job to not put my ideas or what I think it should be before Tiana or AV. It's about what they need and what they want it to be. And I'm there to support. Something with them covenant. You know, people got, you know, obviously upset with how little Marvin decided to tell his story. I can't tell him how to tell his story. As a producer, I can make suggestions. Mm -hmm. But I can't tell him how to tell the story because I don't want to be that producer. There are producers that do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get in business with you 
if I don't like how you 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 make your art. You trust. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Completely. And I need them to trust me. So if I give a note and say, yo, here's the deal. You know what I mean? I think this would be better served if that went that way. But then they still get to say, it's my decision now. Mm-hmm. And if we walk away from that project and they go, you know what? We really couldn't meet in the middle as much anymore. So then maybe I may not be a benefit to you as a producer moving forward. But if a note I give can be beneficial, mm-hmm. if I can be helpful, if I can be additive, then, you know, let's continue just working together. Um, if, if, if not, if we're on different pages, that's okay. Don't mm-hmm. make you bad. Don't make me bad. Don't make you wrong. Don't make me right. Yeah. It just means maybe we're not suited mm-hmm. for each other. Because I think a lot of people sometimes get excited about, oh, I want this big name and this big name. It's like, but that to me sounds like a war every day on set. Mm-hmm. But you like the idea of those names being on the poster. So it's like, but your quality of life is more valuable than those two names on the poster that's going to make your life a living hell because those people like oil and water. So it's like you, because when you have people, and I'm not saying everybody has to get along on set. No, it's creative. Yeah. But what I'm saying is you want the temperaments to work together. Because me and Melina are very different, like, but we work well together. We have mm-hmm. a good chemistry. Um, and that's why we would, you know, work together again. Um, and so that's a big thing I would tell people. I'm like, make sure the people that are there that are working together, they make sense in the, in the, the doing, yeah. not just on paper. What is a bit of advice that you either got um, from someone mm-hmm. or just like w- something that you told yourself when you were kind of like coming up when you're still trying to grow that uh, you found really useful, really helpful? Hmm. Or even just the thing that you needed to hear. It's interesting. Um, I always go back to this piece of advice because it's, it's simple. It made me laugh at the time. And it's from Gina Prince Bythewood, writer, director of Love and Basketball, The Secret Life of Bees, most recently Woman King. Um, she, I was working as her assistant. Some people may know, like I was her assistant for a couple of years. When I was working on The Secret Life of Bees, I was on that movie. And, you know, people always try to get people to do panels. It was definitely a time, it's not as much anymore, which is so kind of sad. I used to go to panels all the time. Love a panel. I used to go to run the panels and just like get, and just listen. So anyway, as her assistant, I was always getting hit up. Can Gina come do a panel? Can Gina come do a panel? And Gina is very shy, admittedly so. She will tell you she's super shy. Um, so she did, so that's why she doesn't like doing panels, just because she's shy, because she doesn't want to, you know, give out advice. So this one time I was in her office and I was trying to convince her to do it. And I was like, Gina, like, okay, just they, okay, can you do the panel? And just, and she's like, why? I said, because I think people could use your advice. <laughs> and she goes, what am I like, what am I going to say? I was like, I don't know. Like, what would your advice be? to like some up and coming writer director. And she goes, be great. I was like, that, that's your advice? She's like, be great. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> you know, and, and I don't even know if I convinced her to do it, but, and that was years ago, obviously. And it just stuck with me because it is simple advice, but I know what she means. Mm-hmm. Like, if you get an opportunity to do anything, be great. Just be great. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes, and it's also the most difficult thing. Yes. Because what I've learned that the universe is not always conspiring for your greatness because it'll throw things at you. Mm-hmm. Like life, you know, bills, breakups, unexpected losses, um, hurt, pain. People say, you know, like creative block, all kinds of stuff, pandemics, strikes. And in those moments, you got to go inside yourself, silence all the noise, 
and be really great at whatever it is that you were put here to do. Mm. And when you do that, you really focus in on that thing. At some point you'll emerge and you'll have something to show for yourself. And people don't recognize greatness. You can't ignore it. You can't ignore it. That's facts. So it's simple advice that I was frustrated about when I heard it back in the day. <laughs> but I've since told Gina that it's lingered. And you can make that anything. It can be be exceptional, you know, be great, be amazing, be invaluable. Um, she also told it to me too when I was starting as her assistant. She's like, be invaluable. Make it hard when you ain't here. Mm. Let me notice your absence. Have impact. Yep. When you, it's like if you're absent from a space and you don't want the people to be grateful. Mm. Damn. That's a bar. I hope that that hit y'all <laughs> the way that that hit me. Um, you don't want people to be like, whew. Exactly. Because like, I know, because I, you know, I'll be on my YouTube channel, like, talking my stuff, talking about what I'm going through. And there are a bunch of y'all that that feel me, connect with me. And so that hit me in the chest. And so I know y'all just got popped in the chest too, <laughs> uh, with that one. Yeah, man. And so, all right. The questions are a wrap. Those are great questions. You Thank fucking, you. You did that. Thank you. Ate that up. Ate that up. Yeah. So we can play a game called Serve or Swerve, if you have time. We got time. Okay. Serve or Swerve? Serve or Swerve. So I'm going to show you on this handy dandy iPad. Okay. Four past looks of yours. Oh, okay. All right, now I'm nervous. And you got to let me know, and you have to let me know if it was a serve, like, yes, I would do that again. Uh huh. Oh. Or a swerve, like, I have notes. <laughs> On myself? On yourself. I don't know, man. If I, look, <laughs> if I rocked it, I'm going to be proud of it. So let's see how this goes. Period. A Taurus, everybody. Classic. OK, this is the first one. Ah, oh, this is cute. This is Chicago so Mag. This is like, only thing I would swerve a little bit is the makeup. Like, I was like really doing the makeup thing. And I, I'm glad I don't, it's just not my jam. It's so interesting because the bow tie, I was trying to make a thing. It was just still like... <laughs> we all go through a bow tie phase. You know. It just happens. I don't think I could pull this off now. You definitely could. I don't know. I'm thinking of your uh, your Met Gala look from 2019, I think it was, where you yeah. wore the zoot suit. Oh. Or the blue suit. Was that 2019? Oh, yeah. Kirby. With the red lip? Yeah. Popping. That, that, I was like, well, because it was the Met. I'll do it. You know, I'll do a lip with the Met. Yeah. I did one too recently, um, but yeah, this is like very pink though. Okay, so your take on you. You know what? Swerve. I just said I wouldn't, but I, I, I may, I may swerve this one. Okay. That's okay. Fair. Just because it's like it's a different time, different era. But I'm, I'm not <laughs> mad at it. Okay. Am you I can, swiping? Yeah, you can swipe. Boom. Yo. Culture this is all feature. Melina Mitsukas is doing, because um, we did this photo shoot together, and. Um, she was like, I'm gonna challenge you, I'm gonna push you. Cause Melina is like a real, she, that's why I say I'm not into fashion. Melina Misukis, Cynthia Revo, they are fashionistas. Mm -hmm. I just be picking stuff out that I think will look good on me. And so this is very much like, you know, Melina was like, you gonna, I'm gonna push you on this photo shoot. It was a little experimental. Very moment. much so. So for that case, I'm gonna say it's a serve. I'm not gonna swerve it because Melina would be like, yo, you bodied that. I would not even, I wouldn't let you swerve on that one at all. Absolutely this not. This is crazy. This is That's big. a serve. Absolutely. All right, am I going again? Mm hmm. Yo, I dug this. This is a Jason Bolden uh, styled situation, Prada. And he told me we, we, we figured out the pose. We always figure out the pose before. Are this you, is, are you, um, are you, how do you feel taking photos? Like being on a red carpet? I stuff? like it. It's cool. You know, I got like a couple, I only got a couple poses, a couple looks. I don't need just a couple. I don't need them. It's just like you just do a couple poses. Yeah. You know, do you like doing red carpets? I hate it. Okay, fair. Hate it. It is awkward. It is. But, you know, you just, yeah, it's, there's no getting around it though. Mm hmm. And I like this. This was fun. And you went fair. with like the, the traditional suit. Yeah. You know, like Prada. You know, like I said, I, I don't mind a, a designer moment. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, that was a fun night. 
that was a that was a good time. Work. Yes. All right, you got one more. Okay. Yo. Season yeah. 20, Jason, Project Runway. Jason Bolden sitting next to my homie Elaine, Walter Roth, who's the shit. Uh, this is, I believe, Versace situation. Um, this was cool. This was a lot Vibrant. of- Vibrant. Yes. More color than I'm used to. I'm gonna have some color today a little bit. It was just cool. And it, it was like, because it was Project Runway, it was, I felt like, okay, this is a project project runway. Mm -hmm. I would rock this in a millisecond. Yeah. I felt very comfortable. I was nervous. I'm always nervous to be a judge. I did a judge on Drag Race. I was a judge on Project Runway. You just nervous because you like, I know y'all are like working hard. <laughs> I know. Uh, y'all sweating. Ah. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of energy. A lot of energy. But I just felt good in that. You a lot of people liked it. A lot of people liked this outfit. This, I mess with this. This is like, something you were wearing. Yeah, one thousand percent. One thousand, and I don't even really like mess with turtlenecks or like anything that comes up the neck because I don't have much of one. <laughs> I just wore a turtleneck, pink turtleneck, Melina's baby shower. Yeah, yeah. Like, er, I don't do color often, like that. But when you do though, it's cool. It works. <laughs> when you do, it works. Even like that that holiday party where you had on um, the August eighth. Oh yeah, yeah. That was a lot like, of color turquoise and just like camel tones like you know what you're doing <laughs> like that's the thing like why are we sitting here acting like you don't know what you're doing oh my gosh i'm learning i styled myself that night um but i learned a lot from jason and like i think that's what i'm doing i'm picking up mm -hmm. i'm like taking notes i'm seeing things trying to change my silhouette up a little bit yeah um but you know you can never go wrong with a hoodie and a jacket like never come on man never go wrong nice little fitted savant Come on. You can take the kid out of Chicago. But you, you know, can't take the Chicago out this the kid. Is, this is a nice little memory lane. I'll take it. Those, yeah. those, are, those are four good selects. This is my inspo. 1,000%. <laughs> All right, everybody. That's Lena Way. That's Jay Fox. Boom. Can we get some claps in the studio? <laughs>